Father, we are here because you've called us and there's a reason why we are here together. I pray that although some of the stuff that we hear it will be beyond our understanding, but there will be a revelation, realization, insight that we could hold on to, Father, for at least for a week that we will go on. Father, it is um, wonderful to live a life in America. Also, it's a challenge to live uh, in America at this particular time. So, Father, as you speak forth through your speaker, God, I pray that we'll get it and understand it. So we invite you, Holy Spirit, now that you calm our spirit. If there is any garbage um, that is in our mind and our heart and if we've been ever contaminated by the porns and the world and out there, God, I pray that you cleanse it with the blood of Christ now. Amen. Father, we don't want to bring crap into a holy place. So let all the crap be washed away, Lord, that we'll be cleansed. We will understand, we'll comprehend, and don't become little boy and be silly. But take life seriously, Lord. So we thank you, we praise you, God, in advance for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I brought a book that I just uh, read this morning. It's by a philosopher named Martin Buber. 1923, he wrote this book. Uh, 30 years ago, my spiritual leader asked me, Bob, have you read I and Thou by Martin Buber? I said, no, sir. You should read it. But at the time, I was pretty cocky. Uh, 1986, I just finished Berkeley philosophy. And I thought, but sir, <laughs> I study philosophy at UC Berkeley. You know, why would I read a Jewish philosopher from Israel who's mainly philosophy of language? So um, I did not read. I was at Oxford uh, last year. I picked this book up because I'm doing my PhD there now. And I really repented. I wish I read this 30 years ago. <laughs> so I'm sharing this with you. I know it's way over your head. Uh, it's way over my head. So I I'm not asking you to understand it. Uh, you cannot. You will not. And it's okay. But I hope there will be a revelation. And try to all bring it together at, at the end of the message. This is, the, this is a guy who actually introduced, you know, you, the, you saw the movie Avatar, and the, and the whole movie talks about hello as I see you, right? I love you as I see you. He's the guy who brought that in as a linguist, where uh, hello really is a functional language where it means nothing. What does hello mean? Really, someone has to define that for you. But I see you is relational, isn't it? I see you. You and I exist in the even context of saying hello. So he's saying that I and thou, he talk about how things have to be relational. And we as Americans turn everything to capitalistic. So, it's, it's 1923, it's a very prophetic book. He writes, this is the sound through the ages, the sufficient, true, and pure, saying of the I by those persons who, like Socrates and Goethe, and bound up in relation, and to anticipate by taking an illustration from the realm of unconditional relation, how powerful, even to bring being overpowering, and how legitimate even being self-evident is the saying of I by Jesus. For it is the I of unconditional relation in which the man calls his thou father in such a way that he himself is simply son and nothing else but son. Man, I almost wept when I read that this morning. <laughs> so profound. I don't know what it means, but it <laughs> sounds so good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, wow. You know, rock star put all this country they visit in their guitar case. I do that to my books. I travel, just with this book, I travel through 11 countries, uh, 18 cities, last 50 days. So I constantly travel. Submitted my first draft PhD, and from first day of February, I took off to Portugal, Cyprus, on and on and on, and I went through 18 cities and 11 countries, just got back to America. And then I find America 
as a very strange place. I spent two years in Oxford or England uh, doing my PhD. Um, when I came back, I subscribed to a lot of magazines, um, mainly because the airline, they don't, I don't want to waste my airline mileage, so I, I subscribed to a lot of magazines. Well, uh, Time magazine, May issue, 100 most influential people from select by Time magazine. I'm like, you know, of course, I'm Korean. And I'm preaching this in the context of Korean, so apologize. <laughs> because I came to America in 1973 at age 12. I lived there 44 years. And I could reflect back of last 44 years and give you insight as those Koreans who now have to spend rest of your life in America. And I will give you a wisdom from a whole 44 years of generation. <laughs> so I, I picked this up, got really excited. I love 100 most influential people. And I read, read, read. Not a one single Korean guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, one North Korean guy made it, Kim Jong un. <laughs> Kim Jong un made to the list. Wow. Well, same month, the Fortune magazine, Yoda, I mean, Jack Ma. <laughs> They had 50 greatest leaders in the finance. So I read, read, some Chinese, some Japanese, some Egyptian, Israelites from all over the world. My God, not one single Korean made it. <laughs> and for some reason that our parents always said, oh, we're the greatest nation. <laughs> really? Well, how is it that 2017, May, none of the Korean made to this list? I don't get it, right? So I, of course, go to the word. I said, Lord, what's the word for the week? Well, you don't have to go there. I'm just going to read it. For we are... God's masterpiece, according to New Living Translation. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Wow, we're a masterpiece. Why is that what it means? King James Version reads it this way. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wow, I almost feel like praying again. <laughs> it's so good. Because <laughs> I want this to soak in. The word masterpiece is poema in Greek. I learned eight languages. One of them is Greek. I yeah. took two Greeks. <laughs> I took classical Greek to read Socrates, and I took Biblical Greek to read Bible. Poema, that's where you get the word poetry. That's where you get the word poet. I published five poetry books in Korean, and I'm proud to do that because a poet literally means to create feeling, color, imaginary world through simple words. You're not writing 200 pages, you're writing half a page, and you create poete. So the word Greek, poete, poema, means to create. So God created. You are the piece of work by God. That's what it means. How, how many of you have been to Malaga, Spain? Malaga, Spain. <laughs> Never been there? Okay. I've been there. Malaga, Spain is the place where uh, Picasso was born and made Malaga famous. Okay. So when I went there, of course, they're going to have Picasso Museum. Sunday afternoon is free. So we went to church. We waited until afternoon and went to Picasso Museum. I, I go to Picasso Museum all over the world, actually. London, Budapest, all these places have great, great art piece museum. I was in L.A. yesterday trying to go to modern art museum, and they charge. 
And I said, I'll not go to a museum that I have to pay money for. So anyways, but Picasso, uh, when he was so into creating new piece of art, and he needed a table to work his new creation. So he ran to the carpenter in his town and said, hey, guys, can you make me a table this, about this size and about this high and this strong? And Can you make me a table like that? And the carpenter smiled and said, Mr. Picasso, if you could draw me the sample, then it's free of charge. Okay, this side didn't get it. Mr. Picasso, if you could just draw me how it's going to look like, then for you, it's free. See, she smiled. She got it. <laughs> Why is it free? Because it's Picasso. Everything that he draws is in, now said in hundreds of millions now. Even then, in those days, he was famous. So everybody says, wow, you know, I, I wish I could get a piece of art by Picasso. But for Carpenter, there was no way he's going to ever afford to anything from Picasso. So he said, just draw me, <laughs> sketch it, sign your name. Like, then it's, you got the table free of charge. Why is that? So I went to museum. I got all this brochure free of charge. You know, if there's a free brochure, always collect it. You know. If you pay for it, forget it. <laughs> so I collect all this free brochure by Picasso and great paintings and oh wow this is great and I clipped it and I start putting on this paper with Picasso painting and some of the children's work some of the street people's work some of the normal people's artwork put in collage and then I told my wife honey tell me which is Picasso she couldn't tell the difference so why is Picasso hundreds of millions of dollars in street person's art and children's art just worth nothing. Well, because master did the piece of work. That's what master piece is. So I think there was a tra mistranslation when New Living Translation said, well, we are God's masterpiece. No, 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 we're not God's masterpiece. We are master's piece. The emphasis is not in you. The emphasis is in God. God. So, so, so this is the misconception. People think, I am a masterpiece. No, you're just a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Made by the master. Your worth is in God, not in you. Wow, are you getting this? Yeah. Very important, guys. Because you've been lied to. Like some of the popular pe teachers said, you could do whatever you want. I'm like, really? <laughs> can I join NBA? Yeah, you could, you could. If you really believe, you could do it. It's like 5'7", man. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's not. You can do whatever you want. If you blab it, grab it. You pros God will prosper you all the days because you, God does not want you to suffer. I thought we were supposed to take up our cross daily and follow God. There's no suffering in taking the cross. No, we don't want pro we don't want suffering. You're a masterpiece, man. <laughs> wow. No, I think we're just a piece. Peace created by master to do what? Good things. Agathos. <laughs> right? You're supposed to do good things. You're you're created. You're just a piece. You're not a masterpiece, you're just a piece. <laughs> to do what? <laughs> Agatho, say it. Agatho? Loud. Agatho. Record. Agatho. What's your name? Aru. Ruv? Aru. Ruby? Aru. Huh? Aru. Arum. What a beautiful name, Arum. Aru. Arum. <laughs> She's a piece made by master to do agathos. What is good things? Now then the culture kicks in, doesn't it? What's good in American culture kicks in. When you preach the same message, for example, in Cambodia, which I live, spent about three, four months, their understanding of good is entirely different. If I preach that in England, a bunch of Oxford students, 
Their definition of good also radically different. Right? When I preach that in Budapest, it's different. So then, what does it mean? What does agathos mean? Well, it means many things. It means good, <laughs> profitable, generous, upright, virtuous. That's what it means. All that. So God made you a piece, the master, and said, now do good, be profitable, be generous, be upright, be virtuous. Unfortunately, by and large, the American capitalistic Christianity has turned it into, let's be profitable. <laughs> All right? If it's not profitable, I don't do. Wow. Really? I mean, if you lose out, if you're going to, where's the spirit of generosity? No, it's going to be America first. Oh my gosh, I was so embarrassed. I'm at Oxford. Every morning, professor will say, so Bob, tell me, Bob, tell me. <laughs> How is it possible for a Christian nation to elect someone like Trump to be your president? Can you explain that to us? I said, no, sir, I'm Japanese tourist. <laughs> I refuse to be American at this point. It was very embarrassing. America's the richest nation in the world. Right now, every day, 2,000 kids, children die of malnutrition, hunger. 2,000 per day. <laughs> every three seconds, kids die because they cannot afford it. In order to stop that entire process, we will cost about $30 billion a year budget, and no kids will die. Think about that. Just now is it $30 billion, man, and no kids will die in the world. America spent last year $36 billion on dog food <laughs> and cat food. Okay? And a uh, man who represent this country who could stop the war hunger says it's going to be America first. And the rest of the world wonders. Wow, that's not good. That's not generous. That's not virtuous. And so we're not going to accept, we're not going to deal with any of these refugee issues when the entire Europe is struggling to cope with it. There's got to be better solution from the world's largest economy in the world to say that we don't want to deal with it. This is about us. See, 40 year, 44 years ago, America was not like that. That's why I'm kind of dumbfounded to go come back to America two years into Europe and find an article like this. Real people, passion in America, built in America, serve in America, what work in America, number one in America, and all this picture, not a single ethnic minority in it. Every single page is white people. And I think this is what our great leader meant, great America again. Come right out of Times Magazine. And I'm quite disappointed. Because 44 years ago, at least, they tried. And I think it's just kind of <laughs> side show. No one really cares. Just want you to work hard in the system. Become a doctors, lawyers, engineers, and just be part of. You know why no Korean is made to this? Because no one in this list worked for money. It wasn't a job. No one in this list made it because, wow, he's a good doctor, serve his family well. Like everybody does that, man. <laughs> so what happened is that somehow we've been told that good means being a good employee of a hospital. Good means being a good engineer in a corporation. And I, and I refuse to believe that. And for the next generation, you're created. You are the piece made by master for good. 
I, I hope 40 years from now that in my 90s, I could read Time magazine and go, oh, there's some Korean kids here. <laughs> Whoa. Well, I would like to thank the crazy pastor 40 years ago said that I was a piece made by master, that I should not work for a job and be part of the American dream. I'm so sad to come back to America and see so many young people. No dream. Just want a job. It's like, oh, is it profitable? Does it make money? I'm like, yo, man, time out. <laughs> what does making money got to do with what you want to do with your life? I'm like, oh, but mama said, <laughs> mama said I'm going to be a doctor. I know. <laughs> your mama and your papa said all kinds of stupid stuff <laughs> because they love you, but they're still stupid. <laughs> Because you don't become doctor because your mama told you, right? Because you are the one who's going to get the most disappointed one. And you're going to be angry at your parents for the rest of your life. You don't do things because it pays. Everything pays. And you know, all of you, with medical improvement, all of you will live up to 100 if you don't get killed by accident or something. So guess what? You're going to do. What are you going to do the rest of your life? The pace that I want to retire on someday? Like, come on. You are created by the master to do what? Good thing, generous, upright, virtuous, profitable, good thing that you could benefit others. That you don't really work for salary, but you work for your passion, what God created you for. Amen? Amen. And then it will be profitable. You know, these people say that, but, but I, I, don't, I don't know what I want. That's why you need to go try everything. My God, you're so young. Don't settle. You know, there are, there are something like 30,000 kinds of jobs in America, guys. 30,000 different kind of professions in America. There are 22,000 kinds of jobs in South Korea. There are 30,000. And your parents came to America and narrowed it down to four. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, lawyer, engineer, business. That's it. <laughs> I, I, I wrote my first doctoral thesis at Fuller, you know, studying this, researching this. And I, I, I'm just mind-boggled by the audacity of Korean immigrant parents. I mean, because they love you. They don't want you to become a beggar, right? They want you to have a good job. Because their entire generation struggled through survive, right? My, my mom went through war, went through Japanese occupation and struggle. So for her, she would always, when I was 12, 13, would hold my hands and say, oh, your hands are so soft like a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Try to brainwash me. <laughs> and she would say, oh, you should be like your dad, who was also a medical doctor. You should follow your dad's footsteps. I said, mom, God called me to be a minister. I want to serve God full time, mom. I don't want to be a doctor. Well, I'm a doctor now, but different kind of doctor. <laughs> Follow your passion. Don't settle for a job, right? Because if you just get a job, I, I guarantee you, none of you make it to this list. Ask Bill Gates, was it a job for you? I'm like, what? He gave up entire $32 billion asset, gave it back to. He, was, he didn't do that for money, right? Look, ask this guy. Amazon, I mean, did you try to do that for money? I was like, what? And I try to change the how people shop then, right? And, and yet I find young people get locked in. And even I was in ministry, I planted five churches in SoCal since 91. 20 years I planted five churches. There are a bunch of college kids, 1991. They're in their mid-40s and early 50s now. When I meet them now, I cannot even talk to them. They're so secular. 
only thing they talk about is golf, retirement, their kids going to Harvard, their kids becoming doctors. I'm like, wasn't 25 years ago we started a church because we hate those people? <laughs> We've become those people that we hated. American prosperity. Like, I got enough in the bank. I could play golf the rest of my life and travel. I'm like, is that all you want to do? Really? I've been to 56 countries, folks. Of the 56 countries I visited, I never met someone who said, oh, I got so much, I could just travel, and I'm so happy. I never met anyone like that. Because it doesn't bring joy. You know why? Because you are created as a piece by the Master to do good things. That He planned for a long time ago. God already ordained it, blessed it, called it. This is what you'd be doing. And you're not doing that. Why? Because you're doing your own thing. Right? Wow. So what does that mean for Martin Buber's perspective? <laughs> Let me break this down for you. He says that when Jesus called Father, Thou, You, the intimate You, He said it in the relationship with Father and Son. Did you know that King James Version, Thou, and all that, we say, well, it's a classical English, so it's supposed to be more formal. Not true. Thou actually is a more familiar form. Okay, so what it means is like, hey, yo, that's what it means. <laughs> God is my yo, 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 God. That's what it means, right? But when King James Version got locked, and we don't really translate, well, it was translated Oxford. They just had a show, so I know. So, I am thou, or thou, the term thou is the more informal term, has become formalized, religiousized, and so now we think some I and thou means like, oh God, like that. No, it's yo God. <laughs> it's me here. That's what it means. Right? It's more personal, it's more relational. So, when you find yourself like Jesus, when Jesus said, you're my, you're my Father, God. In that relationship, like I see you, His entire existence, he, who He has become in the context of God, two has become one. That's what it means. And when you learn to find yourself in that place, wow, you're going to find shalom, peace, that surpass all understanding. See, I met too many business people who, who are making millions and millions <laughs> And yet, they're still uncertain about themselves because when they look like, oh, but they're making billions. I only make millions. Compare, contrast, compete. Do not really satisfy with themselves. But when you understand who you are, knowing that God, the God of the universe, created me, fashioned me, molded me into a piece. <coughs> wow, I'm a master of peace. And I'm here to do good the virtuous, generous. Wow, thank you, Lord. I call you Father. Then you enter into that relationship. Whom? Jesus has come to bring you into that relationship. I want you to now come into this relationship where you're encountering God in that way, where people see you and say, wow, he's a generous man. When, when people see America, I want the, the world to understand that, wow, America's a generous nation, not any longer. You know, when I traveled with my son, when my son graduated, I said, hey, want to do a tour of Europe? We'll do five countries, backpack across Europe. I said, yeah, that's great. Let's do it. Well, we did it because uh, I bought him a $1,500 car when he started high school. Or could, I could get you a used car, pretty decent. But if you drive this $1,500 junk, no air conditioning, stick shift, when you graduate from high school, we'll travel through Europe together. He said, I'll take that. So he drove this junk car for three years and survived. No, it breaks down on the road constantly. But when he graduated, I sold that car for 1500 again. <laughs> and with that money, we traveled across Europe. It was fun. When we landed in London, I said, son, don't ever say that you're from America. I said, why, Dad? I'm proud to be American. I know you are. You know, you're born in America, so that's, that's, but just don't tell a taxi driver that you're from America. Well, that's weird, Dad. 
So we got into the yellow cab from London. I said, where are you from? I'm from America. I said, oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, the most foul mouth London taxi driver you find. <laughs> Trash talking America. Do you think America's liked by people? Of 56 countries, I found none. Because we're so not generous. We're starting war everywhere. Because it's profitable. Right? Nixon and Kissinger I was having breakfast together. And Kissinger said, hey, let's drop the bomb in Cambodia. But when Cambodia was not at war with America. But with, there's a, so much bomb that the carriers carry. We need to drop it. So they dropped it. They dropped more bomb in Cambodia than they used in Second World War. They instantly killed 100,000 Cambodians. Okay? This is the truth. This is from the notes. From the, so, so Kissinger is a war criminal in Cambodia. He cannot come to Cambodia. Right? Now, Mr. Trump wants $500 million that he, America loaned to Cambodia <laughs> during war. So the dictator of Cambodia is saying that, well, why don't you then pay for 100,000 young people that you killed? Right? This is so sad. When I read that in Cambodia, when I read that in Europe, and I'm like, this is so sad. America used to be a generous nation. It used to be a helpful nation. So honestly, I put my passport inside, and nobody thinks I'm American. I think, oh, think I'm Japanese tourist, man. I was it? I went to Portugal late at night order this food, and, and he said, wow, so where are you from, sir? I said, I'm from America. He said, sir, you look like, you look like, I'm not, wait, you look like what? Okay, Jesus, right? Jesus. Right? <laughs> he said, you look like Zen master. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not Zen master. That's Japanese, man. <laughs> yeah, the, the look I'm going for is Jesus these days. <laughs> I want to at least look like one. I've been married happily for 33 years. My wife says, you've been trying to be like Jesus, not working, so at least look like one, you know. <laughs> but I want to challenge you, especially young kids. Don't ever settle for a job. Anybody could have a job. You know, ask God, Lord, what am I made for? How, how would I live my hundred years of my life? Lord, how am I a piece made by the master? And I'm here to do good. Something that's virtuous, something that is generous, something that is good, that's something profitable. Something that really edifies the whole world. Some people say that, man, you're upright, you're virtuous. There's something about you that you could testify that you know Jesus, right? That Jesus is your Lord. Jesus matters to your life. Don't, don't ever try to, like, I want to go and be a missionary. I want to be, I'll be an evangelist. I'm going to witness to somebody about Jesus. You might just live it, man. You know, I had a group of one of the largest church. They asked me to come and teach their short-term mission who's coming to another country, and they're going to do street evangelism. And about 250 of them, I said, how many of you do street evangelism in Los Angeles? None of them. I said, then don't forget it, man. You're hypocrites. Why do street evangelism in Cambodia when you don't do it in LA? Is there some kind of freak show? You just want to prove? The why? And why are you street evangelizing in other country when you don't do it in your LA? It's ridiculous. We turn into a show. I mean, if you are a piece made by God, that it, know that you are doing it for good, profitable, generous, upright, and virtuous, Man, people's gonna say, what, what is that about you? What makes you tick? I, I, would, like, I would like to know the secret. And, and some of you will make it into this list 40 years, 40 years later, well, 30 years. Let's say 30, 90 sounds terrible. When I turn 85, when I turn 85 in my armchair, I want to get the Time Magazine and I wanna find some, man, some Korean kids who didn't get a job, but realized that you are a master's piece. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Father, we, are thank, we thank you, Father, for your words, Lord. Make it applicable, Lord, in our lives. 
we don't want to simply exist, Lord. Get paid for job that we do to sustain our livelihood and but you made us for something much bigger than that. You are master, Lord, and we are your workmanship. So help us, Lord, to live up to your reputation, that we will honor your name, we will honor you, and live up to master's reputation of living a good life that you called us to become many, many years ago, even before I was born, Lord, you have had planned a way in advance that we we'll live a good life, profitable, generous, upright, virtuous, agathos life, Lord. Thank you for this privilege. We thank you, we praise you, we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.